So when this player was inducted into the U.S. Hockey Hall of Fame some 20 years ago, we figured in the media something important was going to happen. Not too often that a player at such a young age would get such a distinction. But the great Dave Christian, at age 41, was so highly regarded. Right after he was eligible, he got in. As that's because of his great play with Team USA, a great play over uh, 15 years with five NHL teams. He helped stabilize at least two of those franchises from the depths of despair, in the case of Winnipeg and Washington, to the depths of the playoffs. Made the postseason a dozen straight years, and the years he did make it, he contributed a lot to the success of the squads he played for. Now, David William Cushion, born in War Road, Minnesota, as part of the infamous and very talented Christian hockey family, who played a big, uh, big part in the 1960 Winter Olympics uh, gold medal uh, squad. <coughs> he grew up uh, playing hockey, gridiron football, and baseball, as well as, well as competing on the track and field team for War Road High School. Now, uh, multi, multiple sports, uh, multiple chances to excel in whatever sport he, uh, he took up. But he went into the family business, literally, because if anybody knows Christian hockey sticks, some of the best, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, wood out there for hockey. Now, Dave played in North Dakota in 1978 and 1979. Second season, his draft year, he had 22 goals and 24 assists for 46 points in 40 games. At the time, he was playing center right wing, later played some defense, 5'11 and 170. Now, when the selections were coming for the 1980 U.S. Olympic team that was going to try to win it all in Lake Placid, he was one of the key skaters that were was what he called uh, designated early. He was taken 40 overall by the Jets in a 1979 draft. Now, at uh, he was a Minnesota high school all-state first team in 75, 76, and 77 at War Road, and the World Junior Championships, a very good result for Team USA, got six players. Now, he was named to his high school all-conference hockey team in each of his last reasons at War Road. Now, Here's where it gets interesting. The uh, United States is playing a lot of preseason uh, games, a lot of games in prep for the 80 uh, Lake Placid Olympics. Now, he was, again, one of the key players on that squad, and he, they were part of the, he was part of the Miracle Ice uh, Championship where they knocked off the Russians, uh, the Swedes, the Finns, everybody, everybody else to take a, a, a goal that wasn't expected. As a lot of people know, the, the Christian brothers, uh, no pun intended, were a big part of the 1960 uh, title where they won over uh, Team Canada and other challengers. A lot of people felt that because Christian was there, he knew what it was like to win because, again, his uncle and his father did that for Team USA. And all factors play together. I heard he played a Herbrook style that Christian really, really could adapt to. And if you watch closely at the YouTube games, he's always doing something for his team on the ice. Now, eventually he found his way to the NHL for the Winnipeg Jets. Played his first game on March 2nd, 1980, right after the Olympics. Uh, that first... Uh, soft season for Winnipeg and they were struggling ladies and gentlemen in the early 80s. He had 18 points in 15 games, 8 goals so it bode well for the next season. 81 his rookie campaign 71 points in 80 games but again the Jets, the Jets were struggling heavily but by 82 he got the Jets back in the playoffs with a 76 point season in 80 games. 83 he found his uh, feet again with the Jets, 44 points in 55 games. Again, another uh, another uh, uh, appearance in the uh, in the NHL playoffs. So we're thinking we're watching this that Dave uh, is going to stay be a marquee player with the Jets for quite some time. Didn't work out. He found his way in Washington. A very very strange trade. Uh, Winnipeg traded him to Washington for an 83 first round pick 
and it ended up being Bobby Dolis. Maybe Winnipeg thought that Washington was going to be a second-level team as uh, just because uh, trading Christian wasn't wasn't going to do anything. Boy, were they were they wrong. That season with Washington, he put up numbers that probably uh, solidified the franchise so much nobody could ever uh, say that Washington would be second rate again. Over a number of seasons, from 84 to 89, he scored 29, 26, 41, 23, 37, and 34 goals. Best campaign, again, was that 1986 uh, season, 83 points. 88, uh, the, uh, the partial run towards the Stanley Cup, he had 11 points in 14 playoff games. Now, 1990, he found himself with the Boston Bruins. That season, he played 78 games, 15 goals total. Washington and Boston played in the Stanley Cup Finals. And in 91, he's, he's stellar year with Boston, 32 goals in 78 games. 92, he found himself in yet another marquee franchise, St. Louis, 20 goals in 78 games, and wrapped up his career in, a, in the Chicago system, and uh, eventually was sent down to the IHL with the Minnesota Moose and put up some dynamite numbers over two years, 126 points in two IHL seasons in 150 games. Now, grand totals in the NHL, 1,009 games, 340 goals, 773 points, 102 playoff games, 57, 57 points in 32 games. But we're getting into Hall of Fame territory, and I'll tell you why. There's some question, he made the U.S. Hockey Hall of Fame, but in 2021, if somebody like a Guy Carboneau uh, is getting in, a Claude Provo, he did everything by, but win a Stanley Cup. Here's what I'm talking about. He made the All-Star Game with Boston in 91. Lost the Stanley Cup Finals in 1980 in Boston. He was a Winnipeg Molson Cup uh, winner in 81. Winnipeg's captain for almost two full seasons. He led Winnipeg in points and assists in 81. Led Washington points and goals in 86. Led Washington assists in, uh, in 84. And it was Washington's playoffs goal leader in uh, 84 as well. Now, the NHL contract... Uh, led to good things for Christian. He scored a goal on his first shot of his first shift of his first NHL game, beating Chicago's Chicago goalie Mike Weiser at 107 of the first. He had only been on the ice for, for seconds, seven seconds when he scored. Now, he was the first player in Winnipeg Phoenix franchise history to lead the team in scoring as a rookie. He said to win it set the Winnipeg Phoenix records since broken for most consecutive games with at least one goal with six and most consecutive games with at least one point in eight. Again, he was on defense on occasion, especially during the 82 season. Now, he shifted from center to the right wing in 86 and spent his rest of his career at the position. The big line of Washington, of course, was him and Mike Gartner and Ben Gustafson. Scary as hell, ladies and gentlemen. Scored tons of goals. Now, he uh, also tied a Washington record since broken for consecutive games with at least one assist. And he also scored his goal in his first game in Boston versus Buffalo in 1989. Now, what could really hurt his induction in the Hall of Fame, he was considered by some within management as a shit disturber. And this is where it, be, it started a few years ago. In 1991, he had a dispute when he decided to sign a free agent offer sheet with St. Louis on July 23, 91, but Boston claimed he was not a free agent and attempted to block the signing on the basis of tampering by St. Louis. Now, Boston had argued that Christian was not on any of the official NHL free agent lists. Now, Christian and the Blues maintained that Christian was a type 3 unrestricted free agent because of the number of years of service and was free to go anywhere. An issue was the last NHL co contract Christian had signed with Washington. That contract had extended beyond the 91 season, but Boston had subsequently given Christian another deal that ran through 91. Boston insisted it still owned Christian rights because it inherited the original terms of the Washington contract. The dispute was eventually settled when St. Louis traded the rights to restricted free agent Glenn Featherstone and Dave Tomlinson to Boston in exchange for Christian, a 92 third round pick, Vitalik Prokhorov, and a 92 seventh round pick ended up being Lance Burns. This deal happened on July 30th, 1991. Now, Featherstone and Tomlinson had already signed with the Bruins on July 25th. 91, so the Christian trade was effectively the Blues' form of compensation for their signing. 
But again, just to remember, ladies and gentlemen, Olympics, 1980, gold medal. Canada Cup, 81 fourth, 84 fourth, 91 second. World Championships, fifth place in 81, sixth in 89. Again, awards. United States Hockey Hall of Fame, inducted in 2001 as an individual, and 2003 as a member of the 80 U.S. Olympic Hockey Team. U.S. Olympic Hall of Fame, inducted in 83 as a member of the 80 U.S. Olympic Team. Sports Illustrated Sportsman of the Year, 1980. Also a coach. It was named Fargo Moed's head coach of US, USHL near the end of 98 season and stayed there for two campaigns. Again, he was a management uh, GM for those campaigns with uh, Moorhead. He was also the 15th member of the 1980 USA Miracle on Ice team to be drafted by an NHL squad. Again, he also played defense for Team USA and he's 66 combined games for Team USA were the most of any player on the team. Now, wearing his unique number 23 for Team USA, he led uh, the squad with eight assists in the 80 Olympics, including three assists in a 4-2 win over West Germany. Now, he was honored by his hometown of Royal Road, Minnesota, with a Dave Christian Day uh, on February 28, 1980. Again, he was also on the Washington uh, team that held his 1989 training camp in Sweden before joining Calgary for the 89 NHL Friendship Tour in the Soviet Union and where the Capitals faced four Soviet teams on the tour. Now, he was not, never played a minor league game until 1993 94 when he was 34 years old in Chicago, devoted them to Indianapolis. He eventually signed with Minnesota as a free agent of the IHL September 1st, 94. Now, after his coaching career was done, he went into the stick manufacturing business with his fellow members of his uh, great clan in August of 2002. Now, again, he's the son of Bill Christian, who scored a winning goal for Team USA in the 80 uh, Olympic uh, tournament, the upset Soviet Union, of course, in Canada. He's a nephew of former uh, uh, minor pro and U.S. Olympian Roger Christian and former U.S. Olympian Gord Christian. Now, again, his father and his uncle Roger founded uh, Christian Brothers Hockey Stick Manufacturing Company, and also he's the older brother of former minor leaguer Eddie, uh, Eddie Christian. So the unique situation with Christian uh, is this. One of the top high school players ever in his part of Minnesota. North Dakota star, NCAA strong player. One of the best players for Team USA ever. He basically stabilized the Jets and, you know, put them back on a route of success. The Washington Capitals' success over a number of years were based on him. Uh, almost a dozen straight years in the playoffs. So, I mean, uh, uh, you know, what else does a player have to do? Strong on defense, strong on offense, team leader, a captain, uh, help develop the modern IHL as well, those two seasons in Minnesota, put up some dynamite points, again, put the IHL back on the minor pro map. If if a lot of people want to wanna argue with me why Christian should not be in the Hockey Hall of Fame, I'm going to say, listen, the results are there. And let's let you remind you again. Look at the resume again. World Junior Championship for USA, Olympic Games, World Championships, Canada Cup, three Canada Cup appearances. At, at the heavy uh, U.S. level at these major events, 45 games, 18 goals, 17 assists for 35 points. And again, respected by his teammates, great two-way player, great with the media, great with the fans, great with everybody involved with Team USA. Again, he was the unofficial heart and soul of the Team USA t uh, squad in 1980. Can you imagine in a dressing room they're turning to him and said, how did your uncle and your father beat these teams? And he said, well, I got a story for you. Seeing a Christian on the back of the jersey motivated those players, knowing that somebody had the legacy that he defeated the Russians and the Canadians and the Swedes before, and it was overachieving. He needed an overachieving. So this guy was on the ice. He didn't need to see on his jersey. Everybody looked up to Dave Christian. So technically... What Paul Henderson was to Summit Series in 72, Dave Christian was to Team USA at the Olympics in 1980. You could have not have won without Dave Christian. You could have not had the success in Winnipeg without him. You could have not had the success in Washington without him. Altogether, three major franchises in the 1980s, 
Everything went through him. He was the straw that stirred the drink. Not the biggest total sometimes, but on and off the ice, he was doing things that went beyond the call of duty, as we say. So, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for listening. Keep an eye out for future podcasts on the Team USA players. And don't forget, if you're going to win, you need a Christian. Have a good day. Bye.